Good morning. And welcome to worship at Overbrook Church, where we strive to love God, love our neighbor, and love each other. We begin our worship with the prelude. Please join me in our call to worship. Lift up the gate of your soul. Open the closed door of your mind. Who is the King of glory? God of countless hosts. This is the King of glory. You're able and join us for a hymn of praise. Who brings 
breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth. Would you please join me in our prayer of confession? God of grace, we hid in our hearts the deepest regrets of our souls. We are ashamed to reveal 
that which the cross has already claimed. Bring to light that which we tried to keep in the dark. May we believe that the promise of grace is truly for us. Us, our sins we hide and the sins we ignore. Separate us from our sins by your great hand of mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Know that the mercies of the Lord are from everlasting to everlasting. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Psalms, 55th chapter, 22nd verse. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. This is the word of God. God. I'd like to invite our young disciples to come join me up front, if you would please. Give each one of you a cup. You just hold on to it for a minute. Give each of you a cup if you'll just hold on to that for me. Now I'm going to put some water in your cup. Okay, now what I want y'all to do is go as quickly as you can to that door and back and try not to spill any of the water. Now, as you notice, I spilled some when I was pouring it, so I really do want you to try not to spill it. But don't freak out if you do spill a little bit because it's just water and it will dry. But just try to go as quickly back and forth with spilling as little as possible. Go. You're doing good. You're doing good. Okay, those of you who are back, put your cup in my container here. Okay. Now, let's try it again. Go to the, no, go to the door and back, and you're not racing each other. You're just trying to go as quickly as you personally can 
Go to the door and back as quick as you can. Go. Wow. Y'all did it so much faster that time. Why were you able to do it so much faster that time? Yeah, yeah. Well, who had the water this time? I did. That's right. Today's scripture passage says, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. So, you know, when you're trying to go as quickly as you can to have a cup full of water that you're not supposed to spill, that's burdensome. That's a burden. And in life, when we have burdens like things we're worried about or things we're scared of, they slow us down. They change how we go about our life. But just like when you gave me your cup of water, the water didn't disappear. It's still here. But I had it, and I was taking care of it. And that freed you up to go as quickly as you could back to the door and back here. So it's the same way when we have things we're worried about or things we're scared about. God says, guess what? Just give those to me, just like you gave this water to me. And the way we would do that, how do you think we'd give our burdens to God? through prayer. We go to God in prayer and we tell him what we're worried about. We tell him what our burdens are and we ask him to take those from us and he's promised that he will. Let's give God thanks for that. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us enough to realize that we have burdens in our lives but for being willing, Lord, to take those burdens from us that we might be free and be about our life in good humor, in good spirits, and in good health. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you all for helping me this morning. As we continue in our service of worship, let us declare what we believe by joining together in the Apostles' Creed, standing as you're able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So today we are got a, a pretty brief passage of scripture. In fact, Tom, our worship leader earlier in the week said, thanks for choosing such a short passage of scripture for me this week, you know. And, but there's, it's not that I really think this passage is that complicated as far as understanding it. I think the struggle with this passage comes in applying it to our lives. And as I said to the, I asked the kids, you know, how do we cast our burdens upon the Lord? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at the proper time. It's going to the Lord in prayer. It's, it's sharing with the Lord these burdens. It's giving the Lord these burdens. I think there's basically, there's probably a lot more than this, but I think there are three main reasons we struggle casting our burdens on the Lord. 
And the first one is, I think a lot of our burdens, we think, that's just not that big a deal. You know, I don't need to trouble the Lord with that. You know, that I should just be able to handle that. Well, I want to ask you all this morning, I've got this coffee cup. Is this heavy? Do you think, do you think of this as heavy? This is not a trick question. I don't have any <laughs> weights hidden in it or anything like that. No, I mean, and it's, this is empty, but even if we had coffee or tea or something in it, this just really wouldn't be that heavy. But the question I don't really think is, is it heavy? Well, it is the question, but I don't think we can really answer it just by looking at it and seeing what's inside of it. I think the question becomes... I don't know how long do you expect me to hold it? Because if it's just to pick it up and have a drink and set it down, no, that's no big deal. If it's to pick it up and walk around with it for a few minutes and have a few sips and set it back down, again, not a big deal. But if I had to stand here and hold this for an hour full of coffee or tea, my arm would start shaking, I think. Three or four hours... My hands would begin to cramp. My muscles would begin to twitch. I don't even think I could hold it all day long. But if I did, I'd have cramped muscles, and I doubt it would just be in my hand and my arm, but it would start affecting my whole body. And so there are things in our lives, burdens, and we may at first glance think, oh, that's no big deal. I, I shouldn't trouble the Lord with that. I, I'll just take care of that. But even those things that appear to be small burdens, as we carry them and carry them and hold on to them longer and longer, they begin to affect us and we begin to struggle with them. Notice that it, there's no qualifier in this passage. It doesn't say those really big, heavy scary burdens that you know you can't handle cast upon the Lord it just says cast your burden no qualifier no above you know at the theme parks they have like you have to be taller than goofy to ride this ride you know there's no measuring for burdens in scripture if it's a burden don't worry about it being too small to trouble the Lord with, just go ahead and do it. The other, the, the second one that I think is something that we struggle with is in, as I said, we cast them on the Lord through prayer, but I think it's sometimes how we go about praying to the Lord. And I've got something with me today. Um, I have a fishing pole with me today, and let's see, I'm probably going to get it all tangled up and totally lose my illustration, but does anybody, can anybody tell me right off bat what type of fishing pole I have? Yes, a fly rod, and I do have it tangled up um, there, well anyway, um, I'm no great fly fisherman, but I know just what, as my dad used to say, just enough to be dangerous uh, about fly fishing. And let me see. First of all, there's no hook on this. This is just some thread, some fluff. But when you're, when you're fly fishing, you, you take the line in your left hand, if you're right-handed, and you get the line up in the air going like this. And then when you're ready to cast, you do like that. So actually, what I was doing initially, that has a name. Do you know what that's called? That's called false casting. False casting. Because you're going through the motion. Don't you grab it, Kurt. You're going through the motion, 
but you're not actually casting. But to cast, what do I have to do? Let go. And what do we do in our prayers? Oh, we take it to the Lord in prayer. We tell him all about it as if he might not have known. You know, like we're really telling him something he didn't already know. And we tell him about it and we might whine and complain about it. But we never let it go. And so the scripture says, you know, cast your burden upon the Lord. But I think just like in fly fishing, you know, we're kind of going through the motions. But, but we're false casting our burdens on the Lord. Because, it, you know, anybody looking on the outside would be, look at, look at Pastor Mark casting his burdens on the Lord. But God knows so many times I'm just false casting. Because I'm telling him about it, I'm explaining, I'm even suggesting what he ought to do about it. But I'm not letting it go. Then there's a third problem that I think we run into. And for that, today's just illustration day, I couldn't help it. <laughs> for, for the third item, problem, I have this. Now, so, and the reason I brought one today is because I'm hoping that some of you are blessed enough to not have any idea what this is. And this is known as a tamper. And so it's got a handle on it similar to a shovel. But at the end where the shovel head would normally be, there's just this flat piece of iron that's welded onto the bottom. And it's perpendicular to the ground. So how you use one of these tampers is you just pick it up and drop it on the ground. And you think, what is this for? Well, it's an excellent torture device, first of all. <laughs> but what they say they're for in the store is, let's say you had to dig up a place in the yard to bury a piece of pipe or run an electrical line or something. Um, what? Oh, okay, I thought somebody was helping me out and I take all the help I can get but once you've dug your hole and buried your gas line or electrical line and you put the dirt back in the hole but it's never smooth like the rest of the yard is and so you take your tamper and you go over the areas that you dug up well guess what this thing maybe weighs eight nine ten pounds and you start off and you're like, wow, this is easy. Doesn't take long. You're like, I can't pick this thing up off the ground anymore. I mean, it is amazing how it, your muscles and your arms just say, I, I give up. I, I can't do it anymore. And, and the problem is, like, if I had to carry this all day, it'd be difficult but I could just put it over my shoulder and I'd make it through the day. The problem is when you use it the way it was designed, you put it down, but you pick it right back up again. Then you put it down, you pick it right back up again. You put it down, put it right back up again. And don't we do that? with our burdens in the Lord, even when we don't false cast, even when we really say, okay, Lord, I'm giving this to you, and we do. But then, before you know it, we're picking it right back up again. And then we do that about as long as we can, and we say, okay, Lord, I'm going to give it to you again. And then we pick it right back up again. And it, I tell you, I can't stand these things. I own all kinds of tools. I like collecting tools. I refuse to own one of these. <laughs> I went at 8.04 this morning to Home Depot and bought this. And as soon as church is over, I'm going right back to Home Depot <laughs> and returning it. Because I refuse to have one of these at my house. It is of the devil. I, I just can't stand these things. 
is torture. But yet we torture ourselves over and over and over again with our burdens because we give them to the Lord and then we pick them back up. Now, a few weeks back, I preached a sermon on something else and somebody came up to me and said, you know, that's been an issue that I've had to address in my life. And they said, you know what? After years and years and years of dealing with it, I finally just gave it to the Lord. And then they said, and you know what? I don't think the Lord's doing any better with it than I did with it myself. But then they said, the next thing I thought was so important. They said, but I'm at peace. But I'm at peace. And I think that's one of the reasons that we torture ourselves so often by putting it down and picking it back up, putting it down and picking it back up because we misread the scripture for today. We want to read it that says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he will fix it. Or cast your burden on the Lord and he will completely take it out of your life. But it doesn't say that. What does it say? Cast your burden upon the Lord, and what will God do? Sustain you. Absolutely. There's no promise that the burden's going to disappear or go away, but He will sustain you. And so today, and believe me, I'm, I don't know if you all are getting anything out of this today, but I am. <laughs> Because I just struggle with this so much. Either thinking, oh, I can handle this. Or, oh, I'm going to tell the Lord about it, but not give it to Him. Or I'm going to give it to Him, but immediately take it back. And may we hear the truth of this scripture and the beautiful simplicity of this scripture. Cast. And when we cast something, it doesn't say hand it or share it. Cast it. It's like throw it. Toss it, let go of it to the Lord, and He will sustain you. Amen. As we continue in our service of worship, we come to an opportunity, I believe, a blessing to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. We're a Presbyterian church, but this is a sacrament of God. And this is a table, it's a communion table, but I think of it and I love how this church is designed. So we're sort of, I don't know, nobody likes to sit over here. Is there something... I'm new. Is there something I don't know about this section? I mean, it's usually a little light over here, but I don't. nobody sits over Anyway, that's for another time. But anyway, I love how the sanctuary is arranged so that it's as if we are a family gathered around the table. And it's God's family around God's table. So if you are here today from some other church, from no church at all, from some other denomination or no denomination at all. This is a Presbyterian church, but this is God's table and this is God's sacrament. And provided you know the Lord as your Savior, then this, these gifts are God's gifts for you. And you are invited and welcome to come to this table. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, abundant God. We come this morning to the table that reminds us of your great love. Lord, we read in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And Lord, it's at this table that we recall Jesus gathering with his disciples and facing his own death and crucifixion to pay the price for our sins that we might not only just have life, Lord, but have it abundantly. As we come to this table, Father, we pray that as we eat something as simple as bread and as simple as the fruit of the vine, Lord, that we would be able to understand its significance and that it points to something greater than that. Your love and the sacrifice of your son for our sins. Lord, as we remember and imagine what it cost you and Jesus, may we dare to ask, Lord, having received the free gift of grace, what you would have us do, how you would have us respond in gratitude and thankfulness for all that we have received. And Father, for this, we pray and rejoice in Jesus' holy and powerful name. Amen. For it was on the night of his arrest that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. After having given thanks to God the Father, he took the bread and broke it, saying to his disciples, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, likewise, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink, doing this in remembrance of me. Today, as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we bear witness to the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Would you take your elements, opening the part with the bread and now receiving the body of Christ broken for you. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But praise God that through Christ, all things are possible. The blood of Christ shed for you. Would you join me now as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray, praying, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join us for our hymn of response.
as we acknowledge God as the giver of all good gifts, may we continue in our service of worship through faithful response as we bring forth God's tithes and our offerings. Please be seated. As we come before the Lord in prayer, I want to let folks know Brenda Martin's with us this morning. Teddy's not. Uh, it's not just your good fortune. It is, sorry. <laughs> Teddy had surgery earlier this week, and the surgery went beautifully. I think they accomplished everything they had hoped to. But he's been having low blood oxygen level uh, ever since then. And they're keeping an eye on it and doing some supplemental oxygen. Um, but it's like the pain meds suppress the breathing and the other things that are going on suppress the breathing. So let's definitely continue to hold Teddy and Brenda up in our prayers in the days to come that that uh, oxygen level will stay in the proper range and that he will be uh, back to normal soon. Are there others that we can lift up this morning? Amen. Welcome. Okay, her sister-in-law, Tony, will be having cancer surgery on Tuesday. 
others. All right, let's come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for just the way you continue to show up in our lives, Lord. And I apologize, the show up isn't right because you're constantly there, Lord. But thank you for the ways you move and the things you do to awaken us, Lord, to your presence and your provision in our lives. Father, as we continue to be the beneficiaries of your good gifts and of your presence and of your provision, Lord, cause us to look just at the blessings in our lives and to ask you, Lord, and to imagine how we might take those blessings and use them to bless those around us. Lord, not to our glory or to our, uh, that we might be lifted up, Lord, but that you would receive the glory and you would be lifted up. Lord, those facing surgeries, those recovering from surgeries, Lord, those facing all types of illnesses and health challenges, Lord, we lift up. Lord, those who are going through a transition in their life, Lord, who are trying to make a move from a way of life that was just utter destruction and nonsense, and Lord, who are now trying to live a life of sobriety and um, who are trying to be clean, Lord, it's that is such a tough path, Lord, to walk. And there's so many challenges and there's so many roadblocks. Lord, and so often it would seem that it's just easier to go back to the old and to the familiar. Because, Lord, at times, even when things are painful and difficult, there's a comfort in the familiarity. So, Lord, we just pray for strength and perseverance for those who are going through such a time. Give them the courage and the wisdom for the facing of these days. And, Lord, help us as your church be there to lift them up and support them and to not be judgmental about where they've been or maybe even where they are right now. But, Lord, to love them the way you love them and to walk with them, Lord, the way you would walk with them. Lord, for our world, national, state, and church leaders, we again ask for courage and wisdom not to pursue their own agendas or to lift themselves up, Lord, but to seek your wisdom and your ways and your will. Even though it may be unpopular, Lord, you are the only truth and you are the only way. So Lord, help us to seek you and walk in your ways everlasting. Father, all of this and those prayers that have remained silent on the hearts of those here today. Father, we lift in your name and through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join us for our sending hymn. Troubles linger still 
whom shall I I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can say, you will deliver me, yours is the victory, whom shall I fear, whom shall I fear, I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side, and nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. Nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side, I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my I want to get my money's worth out of this tamper. <laughs> so I want to point out something in closing unique about a tamper. When you use one of these until your arms are shaking and you can't lift it anymore, if you're lucky enough to have a friend to spot you and use it while you recover, you can step away from it. And you can rest, and honestly, in not too long a time, your arms start to feel better. And you say, hey, I, you know, I'll take it again. As soon as you pick that up, <laughs> your muscles go right back to where they were 10, 15, 20 minutes ago. And you know, that's the way it is when we keep picking things back up from the Lord. We think, well, you know, I feel better now. I think maybe I can handle it now. But it's just like this tamper. You know, as soon as we grab hold of it again, all of that pain, all of that burden, all of that comes rushing back just 
the way it was before, if not worse. So just like I can't wait to get back to Home Depot <laughs> to return this, just, I just pray that I would have that same determination in casting my burdens upon the Lord, that I just wouldn't even consider taking it back, that I just wouldn't even allow myself to even like, I, do, I don't like being close to that thing, you know? And could we just all cast, just cast and determine never to pick up again? And in doing so, be blessed with the love of God the Father, to, to dwell in the peace that is ours through Christ alone and go in the power and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit. Amen.